love one bloody good gear. I like pies with me bloody cow beer. When I go to a party or a barbecue and the back... Good day everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Matt Hill's Car Models. Today, a um, bit of a build update so far on my buddy build Panther by Ming and it's the Panther A late. Um, just to show you where I'm at and um, what sort of uh, issues I've had with the kit. And so far really I've had no issues with this kit. It's been quite an enjoyable um, build to do so far but um, like everything nothing's perfect and I suppose in the, in the real world um, that's what modeling is all about is to work out and solve the problems and to keep the brain ticking along. But what I must say about this, uh, firstly, before anything, now people might say, oh, look at this, look at that. Be warned, Ming plastic is very, very, very brittle. It chips very easily. Now, I've got a pair of Tamiya sprue cutters, and when I first started cutting these parts out, uh, I was leaving, trying to cut them down fairly close and then sand them out. Uh, it was still leaving a chip mark, tearing a little bit out. Um, which is not worrying me too much on road wheels and things like that. Um, that just adds part could be part of a, a weathering effect. But um, you know, when you start working around superstructure and some of the finer parts, so please be aware of that. So, if uh, my advice to you, if you uh, unless you get yourself a pair of God's hands or something uh, cutters, which I'm going to have to order, um, the old to me ones could be causing a problem. But um, what I found with the rest of the parts when I woke up to what was going on. I left the uh, left about uh, a two millimeter part of the sprue gate there, and, and then just sand it down till it um, reached uh, flush. Now, the parts, the road wheels, I've sort of cleaned them up. They did have a mark on them, and I'm not too sure whether that was part of the road wheel. I couldn't see any reference on it whether that rubber mark on it like the Abrams have like a guide on the outside here to help with it or not, I don't know, or whether it was just part of the moulding process, but I did clean down um, all these road wheels because of the um, of the seam line run, running through it. The other part which did have a pronounced seam line running through it was the drive wheels. Uh, these all took uh, cleaning up very, very carefully, um, just using a, a shaped a uh, bit of wet and dry and to sort of uh, what I've been doing is to sort of help uh, to remove some of the scratches without sanding too much more away uh, I've just been grabbing some of the uh, extra thin Tamiya cement and uh, I have just been running it over now this plastic by Meng it does like the Tamiya extra thin uh, it seems to bond really well it softens it up uh, so if there's any fine areas that you know you, you, you're not too confident on trying to remove a seam line um, don't be afraid just to run a little bit of uh, Tamiya extra thin along it and what it'll do it will sort of uh, melt its way through the ridges and, and sort of lay it out a little bit smoother um, did pick that up off another channel and have been using it ever since there is a lot of fine parts in this kit so um, um, yeah, it will come in handy that method later on. But the road wheels are assembled. They do have a poly cap on the inside of them. Um, these return idler wheel, return rear idler uh, is actually a four part assembly um, with a poly cap and everything on the inside of it and went to where the went together really really well and look at that that was almost three times I tried to lose that part because um, I'm quite good at losing parts uh, but I've got my old trusty chocolate tray um, that uh, just give it a wash out and they're very very handy to keep parts of your model kits in so the basic uh, where I'm up to now is about stage four of the instructions I have got some holes to drill in the uh, the back plate here on this uh, for my version and uh, some uh, a few little uh, heads ups I'll call them heads ups zip, 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 zip. Um, make sure you have got your there's a once you get your whole assemblies aside which goes together very very well there's this plate on either side this is what helps lock the idler torsion bar arms in um, make sure that is perfectly sitting at nine degrees 
uh, very flush up against the side of the hole and make sure it's in perfectly. It will affect everything to do with your torsion bar arms if it's not. Now with the torsion bar arms, I haven't glued mine in. Um, as you can see that one just fell out. Most of them do sit in there. They come with a keyway which you have to glue a keyway in. Uh, you glue the back piece into these. This keyway will fit into um, its corresponding piece to keep everything lined up. However, they move. They're not a real tight fit in there. So what I'm going to do is leave them unglued until I can get, and probably to make the ease of painting as well. Um, and then once I set everything up and my road wheels on and I can make sure that I've got all my wheels are touching the ground, uh, then I'll just glue them off. Or th these are not opposable set. You can buy an aftermarket set from Ming to make the suspension workable. I think you could make the suspension workable without it by simply um, drilling these holes out so it removes the keyway the shaft sits into and then you'd have to be very careful what you do but then they'd be fully workable um, and you just have to set up where you want to glue them into place. But I, I'm just going to leave these with a little bit of play in them until I get my wheels sorted out. The other thing that I found with this kit, and I'll just quickly go to the instructions. Excuse me. So I said I'm up to roughly stage four, which is um, uh, here and here. Now, <clears throat> the instructions are not very clear, but there is here, Oh no, hopefully you can see it. There's four sets of suspension A, two sets of suspension B, and ten of suspension C. You just make sure you check with the instructions where each of these torsion bar suspension arms go. Don't try to force the these uh, suspension torsion bar arms into the holes they will go in where they're supposed to go in but um, you've got to make sure you get them lined up and make sure you uh, don't try to force them in the holes because these have to go where they have to go that's all part of the suspension and all part of it works up and the other thing they don't show you on here is that with this torsion bar suspension um, it will run opposite to each other so the suspension arms run opposite on the tank. Um, it doesn't show you that very clearly at all. It also tells you on D13 down here is to put an escape hatch, which I think they are in. Uh, it's got no lug for where it lines up. So um, just, you know, to make it so it looks close as what it should be. So what I've done, this is the same size hatch or inspection cover here. Um, I say inspection cover to get to engine components, etc. Um, I made that line up the same way in the round here as that one. So the bolts sort of all look the matching throughout. It's, there's no location pin in there for that. Um, and we had a tiny little bit of uh, trouble here with a bit of a gap. But a little bit of sanding and then a bit of, run a bit of extra to me thin in there. I found out if I just pushed it in with my hand and held it there for a minute, it, 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 uh, it took up and uh, worked quite fine. The whole thing is, is quite sturdy now, even though it's a multi piece hole and everything's all straight and square. There's no way you can mess it up. It's just uh, that uh, simple. Um, some very nice cast texture on these final drive housings on both sides and uh, the weld work and detail work does look quite quite nice and uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying this kit so far so that's about where I'm at um, I will work on um, and do another four or five steps and then I'll come back 
I'll probably, um, as I said, I'm not adding the road wheels now until um, after I've painted this hole. I'll assemble the uh, jack and, and do a few things and then we'll work on the tracks and, and, and we'll see uh, how all that goes together. And then once I get the lower hole sort of mostly completed, I can have a look at um, where the Zimmerit's got to go on before I do too much. Um, the only thing I found with the Zimmerit set, it doesn't give you really any clear instructions on where things go. Now, I've also um, looked at this is one thing too, this is very sticky this side of the paper, the protective cover. Now, what I've found so far on this as well is it's a decal. Um, just like any other decal, but it's got some sort of texture to it. Now, I've seen on a couple other videos that they have trouble with this uh, decal sheet actually uh, coming off. Uh, it doesn't stick well in a few spots. So what I'm trying to do, um, I just can't find, and I don't know whether mine didn't have it or not, but it's got numbers here, and I don't know whether it's in the main instructions or not where the Zimmerit goes. I haven't told you the truth. That's a very pretty good question. Um, <laughs> it... Uh, Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Sorry. Now, um, tells you where your Zimmerit goes. So, I'm going to start adding Zimmerit. And before I go too much further with construction, so I'll do the lower hull Zimmerit and the rear engine deck um, and get that on and just see what it looks like because. I have seen that it comes off. Um, I want to prime this also um, as well in, in some uh, Tamiya hole red just to give that oxide look and also break away from any of the whitish marks here that have come through from the build process and sanding. So give that a, a coat of Tamiya hole red and then hopefully what I was trying to do to resolve the Zim problems on the back and, and I'll, I'll experiment with a couple of the small um, just this label's done, this Ming label and everything's done, is I'm going to try to help it stick down is in the water for my decals. I'm going to mix a little bit of this and experiment with some rocket card glue. So we'll even put the rocket card glue on the plastic and then lay the decal over it, like have it watered down and hopefully that will help it stick and then I can um, just experiment and try and see whether it'll work. Um, so we'll see how that goes. It's going to be just like a test thing for it anyway. But uh, that's it, guys. For the construction side of things is where I am at. Um, the paint set arrived. And I'll just come in just so you can see the paint set. Um, the uh, Ming... AK paint set which um, I got for this is the uh, World War II German vehicles camouflage colours volume 1 comes with matte white, light yellow, German dark yellow, German grey highlight, German light olive green and German red brown. Basically as everyone knows if you've seen Meg paints or ammo or Meg, 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 AK, god blimey there's that much to choose from isn't there guys. So I think this is sort of marketed to go with their King Tiger because it has a little King Tiger thing on the back here that goes, yeah, yeah, that's what we do. Um, let me get this back in the screen. The uh, just tells you some of the basic or some of the camouflage for the King Tiger. Um, the thing I've got to get for these is some bowls, boys. They got no bowls. Whereas Mig has bowls. And uh, I found with the only um, couple of products I've bought from Meg, uh, like my white washable camo, is they have got some balls in them. 
and so they mix up a lot better than the AK because I've only ever had one other AK product which I've tried is this rubber tyres and it doesn't has really trouble mixing up so I've got to go and get me some bowls some big steel bowls or stainless steel bowls anyway and uh, put these all together so it has the white in there it has the uh, the, the light yellow um, it has the German dark yellow is the uh, German dark grey the olive green and you can see by how it's pigmented um, they really need a good shake up um, so and where these have been laying down I suppose on the shop shelf or in transport in a packing box it, um, it always pays to keep rotating your paint now, don't laugh I've always uh, spoke to a guy in an automotive uh, shop and uh, it's just like canned vegetables in the pantry you've got to keep turning your paints so that way the pigment doesn't stay and settle on the bottom so every now and then guys make sure your lids are on properly um, rotate your paints once a, once a month and it keeps the pigments going because otherwise they sit on the bottom and they just turn into a gluggy mess the only thing I don't like about rotating my paints is before you use them make sure they're back that way again because there's nothing worse taking the lid off and half the paint still stuck to the lid um, so do plan for that so that's the German dark grey um, we've got the uh, light olive green and we've got a German red brown and I said they're very still very pigmented in the bottom of the bottle so they will take a good shake up so I'll put them back in their box because I don't want to lose them and then I'll stand the box up I don't like that so all everything uh, all the pigments start moving back down to the bottom of the bottle the other thing that came to finish the Big Panther off is the um, MIG Ammo MIG Jemez uh, weathering set, dry earth tracks etc for you, those of you who have seen it you know what it's like um, for those of you that haven't seen it this is what's in the box um, never used any of this stuff before um, so all new to me but see that, hear that mixes up beautiful, the pigments come off the bottom of the bottle and I don't need to go and buy any balls um, so we've got the rust tracks then we've got the metal polishing which I really like this this MIG MIG uh, metal stuff because I have got one of those in a gun metal um, we've got some dry step um, medium density mud splashes splashing a bit of mud got some track wash here and we've got the North Africa dust so I probably bought the wrong bloody thing but um, the dust colour does look a bit like North, Northern France anyway so we'll see what happens we'll see what it looks like we'll see what goes from there but that's it guys so I'll do up to the track stage um, never done any tracks before like this so it's going to be a bit of a test sample um, if you haven't already got one do yourself a favour and get one of these Meng um, Panthers it's a refreshing change from flying things and floating things and, and the detail is really good it's going together well very reasonably priced uh, and I think you'll enjoy it so until next time guys be good, model hard, stay safe and uh, God bless you all and remember a little bit of effort you can get a good result out of an old kit. Catch ya.